while I was uh, seated, um, you know, while Dr. K was ministering yesterday, you know, I, I, I just saw God's heart and desire to pour himself and to impact his people. And that's why I, I mentioned to us, as God put in my heart yesterday night, that let his passion to bless you, or let your own passion to receive from God match God's passion to bless you all in this convention. He started yesterday night. We spent some time in his presence. You know, there's a need, and, and, and I see my wife and I were talking about this, you know, just yesterday, that God has a way or has a system of impacting his people. Now, there's a regular general meetings every Sunday, every midweek service, every small group meetings. We come together, we hear the word, we get, we get you know, we learn, we get impacted and all of that. But there's also, there are times when he calls for solemn assemblies. There are times when he calls his people together specifically to spend time in his presence. And, you know, Jesus had that. Jesus had the time when he called people together on the mount, you know, and then he taught the Beatitudes. There's also, there was a time, even the miracles of the breaking of bread, it was when people came with him, they spent time in his presence. If you recall, that, that miracle was preceded by the apostles telling the, uh, the disciples that, you know, they spent some time, they need to go get some food. And Jesus was telling them, he told them to wait, um, you know, and then, of course, the miracle happened, the breaking of bread, the multiplication and but it was a show that God, Jesus had time when he had people gather and spend time in his presence. So we're doing that. We started yesterday. We're going to do that today. But I, I, there's something I, I just I just want to say that to hope on you hope, you know, to what God is doing in this season. You know, there is, um, you know, you, there is a time even when you wash your car, you can take your tire, your car through the car wash. You know, five minutes or less than that, you're out. There are certain times that you need to do some detailing on your car. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? And that takes some time. It takes some time. You spend on you go there, you schedule. Oh, they need to service your car. You go there, you, 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 you clear your schedule, you know, you sit there and you wait for them to do what they have to do. Because, and, and th this is what is going to be happening. That started hap happening already. I mean, I mean, yesterday is going to continue today. Where God is re resetting our minds, you know, impacting our spirits building us up for the journey ahead of us. There's something ahead of us. There is a season that has changed, that is upon us. And as a people, as individuals, as believers, we have to be sensitive to that and open up ourselves. So don't be in a hurry today. You know, um, and I believe you've cleared your schedule to come and fully receive from him. Hallelujah. And that's why this morning I want to um, share with us, I'm just going to, I'm like, um, you know, for today I'm like John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Amen. Just to prepare the way for several doses of God's word um, that will be coming our way. You know, I'll be bringing up, you know, my pastor, um, Pastor Dot. I've known him for, oh Lord, several years. He's been a great blessing to me. Um, I learned a lot from him. I learned how to do life and ministry, how to live life from him. I'll have the privilege of bringing him up. And then we have Dr. K joining us as well. You know, we have testimony that's been lined up. All everything shaped to position us to receive the fullness from God today. Come on, turn and say, I'm ready for God. So I'm ready to receive everything. Hey, I can hear say, I'm ready to receive everything that he has in store for me today. In the name of Jesus. All right, let's read from Joel chapter 2 and verse 23 to 26. It's been like a key scripture for us, um, you know, over the last, as we've been preparing for this conference. Joel chapter 2 and from verse 23 to 26. He says, be glad. <laughs> you know, there is, and gladness, you know, it, it's different from, from, from happiness. When you see, especially when you see God's word say rejoice in him. You know, it talks about, it's out of a revelation. Yes, I may not have seen some things happen right now, but I know in my Noah, the things that God has in store for me. He said, be glad you children of Zion. Do I have children of Zion in the house this morning? He said, rejoice in the Lord your God. Why? He said, there's a reason why you need to be glad and rejoice. Because he has given you the former rain faithfully. I love that, that word. He said, he has, he has not just given us the former rain. He has given us consistently. He said, also, and it will cause the rain to come down for you. Both the former rain and the latter rain. Now, um, in, in, in this this scripture was written in the context of the Israelites. And then, you know, they have the, they needed the former rain and the latter rain. The former rain comes around, um, you know, September, October, November. 
when they plant their seeds. So they need that rain to water it so that the seeds will, will start germinating. And they now need the, the latter rain around March, April, May to, to stir up the harvest that they need. Hallelujah. So God is saying, I'm going to give you rain that will cause the things you've planted to germinate. Not just that, I'm also going to give you rain that, that even the things you've planted will also cause it to bring forth harvest. Say I'm receiving the, latter, the former rain and the latter rain. And he said that your threshing floors shall be full of wheat. Your vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarm locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. You know, Bible history tells us, our Bible scholars tell us that those four kinds of locusts, they represent different ways the devil operates. We don't have time to go into that. Um, you know, but he says, irrespective of what the devil has done, he said, my great, and my great hand I send amongst you, he said, you will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And all of this is coming as a result of the former and the latter rain that I will pour upon you and will cause things, you know, to open up. You know, the rain talks about something that comes from God. You know, the rain comes from an above and comes to the earth. It talks about God's power, God's hands, as, as we read, as we learned yesterday. God's endowment, a spiritual catalyst that, you know, it, it comes from above to the below. You know, so it talks about God himself bringing his power, releasing his spirit upon us from upon high so that our lives will not remain the same. There will be restoration, multiplication, and harvest in the name of Jesus. And that rain, you know, it, it, does, it comes in different forms. You know, so one, one of the things that characterizes the rain and that's also, that started already, um, you know, in this convention is that it begins to awaken hearts. You know, the Bible term it this way. It says the rain of righteousness. So it begins to align us with the word. Align us with God's plan and purpose. Maybe areas where you know, one might be, have slacked before. Things that have been desensitized. As the rain of God comes, it rejuvenates those words uh, or those revelations. It aligns hearts. In Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12, it says, so righteousness for yourself, read the fruit of your unveiling love and break up your unplowed ground for it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. So God rains righteousness on his people. As his people, born again believers, we know we have the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have that nature. But the reign of righteousness, what it does is it begins to awaken you know, the righteous nature on your inside. Maybe it's the place of your prayer. You know, maybe prayer has been lacking. God begins to stir it up. When he brings the rain, he awakens your spiritual life. Hallelujah. He awakens your, your dedication to the word, your dedication to his purpose. Maybe, you, you know, you've been busy. You've been carried away by the, the busyness of life. When his rain comes, he begins to synthesize the hearts of people. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 10, Verse 11, sorry, 1 Samuel 11, 6 to 7. said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul and upon everyone that heard the news. His anger was greatly aroused and he took the yoke of oxen, cut them into pieces, sent them throughout the territories of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, whosoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, it shall be, so it shall be done to this oxen. And the fear of the Lord came upon the people and they came out with one consent. What happened there? They were about to go to war and a lot of people, they were slacking. The people, they were holding back. And then Saul, you know, empowered by the power of God, sent out a message. Hallelujah. Imagine getting in your mailbox uh, some yoke of oxen and, and, and you know, Hanimad has been caught. And, and, and Saul sent a message. said, anybody that doesn't respond, this is what's going to be done to that person. But the thing that happened is that the fear of the Lord came upon the people. There was a, a, a change of heart. The people were moved. You know, yesterday we heard about you know, the, the, the reign of prosperity. So people, now what I'm seeing is people will be aligned. They will open up. The, the mindset will be changed. And then they will respond to what God is doing in this season. One of the things that also comes by when the rain comes is that there's a revival of the word. It gives instructions. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 to 2. It says, give here, O ye heavens, and I will speak. Hear ye whole words of my mouth. My teaching shall drop as the rain. And my speech distill as the dew, and as raindrops from the tender herb, 
as showers to the grass. God is saying that my teaching will come as rain. So words of revelation, words of instruction will come your way. It started yesterday. That's how the rain finds expression. It begins one, it sensitizes our hearts. It awakens our hearts. Then it comes with the word, instruction, set of instructions. No wonder in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 11, it said, as the rain comes down from heaven and does not return, Without watering and making the earth to board. It says, so shall my word be. So said, my words come down like rain. So God will be raining his word. Instructions today. You know, started yesterday. It's going on now. There will be an avalanche. An outpouring of words. Revelation. Instructions by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Say, I'm, I'm receiving the rain of the word. In my life. In the name of Jesus. The other part, oh hallelujah, glory to God, is that he reigns his spirits, his anointing. You know, in that Joel chapter 2 that we read, he said, be glad. He said, I will give you the rain, you know, the former rain and the latter rain. And then he went down in verse 28, 29, he said, I will pour out my spirits upon all the people. I will rain my spirit upon them. I will endue them with my spirit from upon high. You know, this rain was so important. Jesus told disciples, don't go anywhere. I've told you, go and preach the gospel. But wait till you be endued with power from an eye. Yes, I've given an assignment. But you need the rain of the spirit to carry out that assignment. I've given you a vision in your heart. But you, rain, you need the rain of the power of God to come upon you to enable you to do that thing. Yes, I've put a desire, a burning desire in your heart. Thank God for that. That is required. It's needed. But you need the empowerment from heaven to enable you to do that. And lastly, one of the things that rain also does is that it rains provisions for his people. In Psalm chapter 78, 24 to 29, the Bible says uh, God rained manna for his people. He rained provisions for his people. Ah, I know in my heart we've been praying. You know, it was a few weeks ago when we were in a, in a prayer session here at church. God said we're raising mighty men and women amongst us. And not mighty men in the place he has called them to. Mighty men of substance. Mighty men of influence. Hallelujah. And one of the things we know that this rain is going to do is going to open up the supernatural windows of heaven and pour his provisions upon us. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to end with this. So we've talked about what, how that rain comes, you know, in different ways and what it does. You know, of course, one of the things Dr. K told us yesterday, the way he finds expression is through his hand. The hand comes upon us. It brings divine relationships, you know, amongst other things. So, but why do we need this rain? Why do we need it? Why do we need it? Because it's very important. If you don't know why, I mean, you know, we're not fully maximizing, oh, rain, 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 praise God, rain, rain has come, we receive it. But why do you need this rain? So a few things I just want to, I'm going to mention. One is that it's important to know that there's a curse upon this earth. There's a curse upon this earth. You know, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve sinned, God told them because of what you've done, something has been released upon this earth. And that's why we saw also in Genesis chapter 12, when God appeared to Abraham, the first thing he told him was, I will bless you. So that that blessing would ensure that the cost of this earth doesn't come upon you. And no wonder in Genesis chapter 3, I mean Galatians 3, Paul writing to the Galatian church told him, he said, God seeing, um, you know, what God, what he was going to do through um, Jesus Christ, preached the gospel aforehand to Abraham. And he told him that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Talking about that, the, a major part of the gospel that Jesus brought to us is the blessing. And that, we need the blessing because there is a curse upon the earth. In fact, in Genesis chapter 8, you know, in, in 3, first of all, the, earth, the curse came upon the earth and made it not as fruitful. And that's why the, 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 men, the, early, the men then, they find it so difficult to even bring forth fruit from the land. That's why in Genesis chapter 8, after the flood came upon the earth, God smelled that, that offering that Noah did. And God rolled back, in fact, intentionally, the, the, earth, um, the curse upon the the produce of the earth. And he said, because of you, you know, and he said, I will remove this curse from the earth. 
And we see that, you know, the ark of, 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 of Noah, we saw there that he is landed on the Mount Ararat. Ararat itself means reverse or course has been reversed. And then God reversed the course upon the earth. But God still needed to see some courses being manifested around. And God said, I need to shield my people from this cause. And not just that, I also need to empower them to prosper and to move forward in their lives. So that's why we need the rain. We need that rain because there's something working on this earth. The world is on a downward trajectory, trajectory normally, and you need God's divine power to go against that tide. And to, it's like the law of gravity versus the law of lift. There's gravity that's pulling everything down. The law of lift now takes you above that and ensures that that, law, that gravity, when you're in that plane, doesn't affect you. So there is, a, there is a flow in this earth, and God has shielded his people so that we can, you know, be raised above that. The other reason why we need the rain is because this earth, experiences cycles of famine you know we see in genesis chapter 12 after god blessed abraham the bible said there was a famine in the land in genesis chapter 26 he said there was another famine in the land as well he said it was different from the one in the time of abraham we see also in, in joseph's time after he interpreted the dream for famine came upon the earth for seven years so there are cycles of famine that comes upon the earth there will be there might be times of natural prosperity but there's times when famine comes upon the earth as well and you need this rain to insulate you against that. So it doesn't matter your um, the, the, the equipment you have as a farmer. If there's famine, there's famine. Then there's nothing you can do. If the earth is dry, if everything is not working, you know, there's nothing you can do. You, you need God's influence. I mean, there's nothing you can do in the natural. So you need God's influence and power upon you. In fact, in the days of Joseph, it was so severe that money was worth nothing. The Bible said money failed. But Joseph, by the virtue of the blessing upon him, the Bible says he bought all the lands of Egypt because God was with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's another reason why we need the rain. We also need the rain because we've sown some seeds. We've prayed some prayers. We've sown seeds of the word, seeds of prayers, seeds of finances, seeds of service, seeds of patience. And then you need that latter rain to come upon your seeds to blossom. So there's the rain that will first allow your seeds to germinate. Then there's that rain that comes for harvest. So you need the rain for harvest. So, you know, <laughs> praise God. One of the things Dr. K has been saying, you know, in, in, in particular about prosperity is that there are principles of prosperity. There are certain things you can do. You, you, you invest, you, you, you save, you manage your finances, you, you strategize, you do all that. And that is necessary. But there is the power of God that can come upon a man that will enable him to prosper. Isaac and um, Jacob understood this power. In fact, Esau cried when he learned that Jacob had stolen that blessing. Because Esau was a studious man. I mean, it was a, it was a um, what's the word? It was a diligent person. You know, you, you, in fact, when Joseph was even collecting the blessing, it was hard working. And, uh, but when he came back and learned that um, his, his brothers collected that blessing. The Bible says he wept. Because he, and he asked his father, can you just, do you have anything reserved for me? He said, I have given him everything. I have equipped him, equipped him with corn and with wine. And we know that he didn't give him any jar of corn. He didn't give him any jar of wine. But he said, the blessing I put upon him will attract those things into his life. There is the principle of prosperity and progress and success, but there is the power that comes upon a man. That will enable him, irrespective of where he is. Irrespective of what level, what fiscal location, economic location, or wherever he finds himself. That will bring him, lift him up, pull him from the, from the depth of the depth. And raise him up to the highest of the highest. It's the blessing of God, the rain and the power of God. We need that to come upon our seeds and the things that we're doing so that we can have results beyond our natural ability. You need that rain. Two more things. The reason why we also need that rain it's because that is what God is doing now. He said, in latter days, I will pour out my rain upon the people of God. Now, there was the former rain, which was the rain that came in, the, in, the, in, um, in, the, in, in Acts chapter 2. He said, in the last days as well, there will be the latter rain that I will bring, that will bring forth harvest of souls, harvest of prosperity, harvest of increase, so that the mountain of the Lord can be exalted higher above all other mountains. God is doing that right now. He's pouring out his spirit. 
upon his children in different places right here. All he knows as a church is empowering his people with his endowment from on high. He's releasing his power, his blessing, his grace. And that's why we have to be sensitive to receive it. And lastly, it's because it's God's promise. He said, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit. So one, there's a curse upon the earth. Two, you know, um, when there, is, there are cycles of famine that happens upon this earth. It must, it must be a person that, you know, constantly have access to the reign of the spirit of God upon your life. In fact, God told the Israelites, said the land I'm taking you to, it's not like the land of Egypt, where you, 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 the, you water those lands with your feet. In fact, the way they do it, then they, they, they have some machinery, it's like peddling, you know, to get water upon their land. They have to struggle. They have, they have, they have to do, you know, a lot of things in the natural to get water on their feet. So that's not the land I'm taking you to. So the one I'm taking you to, God himself is the one that waters it from heaven. His blessings and his power comes upon the works of your hand. So you have to be mindful of that. Thank God for the things we do in the natural, but there is the supernatural endowment and power of God that comes upon us. So brothers and sisters, we are in an interesting moment. You know, I believe in my heart that, you know, when revival is happen, happening, most people don't know it until after it's done. Then they now write the history and say, oh, this was what was happening in this particular time. I believe that God has started something already in the body of Christ as a whole and amongst us here in this city, even amongst us as a church. And it's important to be sensitive to that. It's important to open up your heart and maximize the move of the Spirit. I think it was Ephesians that was, that when he was singing um, this morning, she said, she, he was talking about Elijah, Elijah, Elijah telling Elisha, he said, if you see me, you know, when I'm being taken, this grace will come upon you. He was talking about, you know, how, how well or how, how strong is your desire for this grace and this rain that God is releasing in this season. This is not a time to be casual, you know, in your walk with God. This is not a time to, you know, to just go with the flow. This is a time to be intentional, to receive the fullness of everything that God has in store for us and God has in store for you in particular. In fact, in fact he said, I will pour my spirit upon every grass in the field. God particularly singles out every blade of grass. He said, my power and my grace is going to come upon each and every one of us. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Come and lift your hands wherever you're seated this morning. He said, Lord, you know, pour your rain upon me again and again and again. A rain of your word. A rain of your spirit. A rain of your power for prosperity. A rain of an awakening for righteousness. Our hearts being aligned to receive wherever they might have been. You know, we drop the ball. Maybe in our walk with God. Or in maybe it's in our prayer, our word life, our service. Or our dedication to God. There's a re we are awakening in our hearts as a result of the rain that is coming. Come on, go ahead and pray. Pray this morning. He ramando si bata can we please rise on our feet for a moment let's let's spend some time praying Ido shekete libra, reba saka talibre malama, rego shekete libre milibra sekete ligista, raman balaba saka talibre nina, levri mariman balabasha, open the floodgates, oh we in abundance, let it rain upon us, agla bindo shigata lidista, et ligre disto shigata libre nina sigatala, libro sekete libre mariman balaba saka taligrista, oh raba saka talibre dista. Oh, Madisto Seget Livre Maramanda, let there be restoration. Let there be divine empowerment and endowment. Oh, let there be rains of healing. Oh, Riba Sota Livre Nina, rain of prosperity and increase. Oh, rain of an awakening of hearts. Oh, towards God, a sensitizing of hearts. Embro Sota Livre Melabasha, let every ashes on the altar of men be cleansed by the reason of the reign of the spirit that is coming upon the people of God uh, or even today, tomorrow or in the name of Jesus oh lord we give you praise we thank you for your reign we receive the fullness of your power amongst us this morning in the name of Jesus just want us to lift up our voices our hands and our voices to go I want to sing that song 
And I will invite um, FC Battle, please, um, to come forward and lead us and minister to us in songs. Lord, we give you praise. Open the floodgates in abundance. Open the floodgates. One more time, open the floodgates. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates.